They're like, hey, hey, what are you going to do? Ah! And so the guard's yeah. like, these guys are on PCP. We got to, you got to call the cops. <laughs> right? So moving on, I, I want to get back to this urban, uh, urban apocalypse, urban wasteland. Um, mm-hmm. Location. Uh, clearly the location plays a lot into this movie, but how much does it really matter for this movie? Um, Cause I was thinking, why couldn't this take place, uh, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And I, and I got to thinking about it and I was like, Oh, this movie is basically deliverance except without the squeal like a pig part. Yeah, I mean, right. It's a group of friends. They they're going yeah, on. Yeah, they a trip. they just weren't weren't talking about the animal when they said it in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they they get into the to the wrong neck of the woods, right, and meet yeah. some unsavory characters that chase them throughout. Um, yeah, um, you're a hundred percent right that the the location does not matter, and I think that is part of the uh, theme. Um, if we can pull up, I have a picture that I called leaves. Well, here we can, we're on this picture. We can, we can go with that too. I'm going to go, go let's that. go to leaves. Okay. Leaves. We'll start with that. Leave and we'll go it back alone. to that other picture. So what happened here, this is the beginning of the movie and that brilliant day of the soul, uh, teenage fan club songs playing mm-hmm. and the sky's raking and it's this nice suburban, beautiful thing. And he's raking leaves. And then all of a sudden these kids run their bikes into it. And he gets all sort of bent out of shape. This is a this is a metaphor for road rage. Yeah, and and road rage is a metaphor for what happens with Dennis Leary, which I'll get to. But so this is the idea of there's something idyllic, and it just takes one little thing, and it becomes not idyllic. It becomes dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that Jeremy Piven's character, the one character who dies, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. He was talking about like these people are going to help us. And this this, we're, this is my home, right? And and Emilio Estevez says you're you're less than ten miles from your home. These yeah. are your neighbors. These are us. What do you yeah. mean? So he's calling Jeremy Piven's characters BS out, saying we're not in some dilapidated dark area. We're in our home. It just happens to be night, and it happens to be uh, dark, and it it is a little run down in this area but it's just like anywhere else. And these people are just as scared of us as we are of them. Like it's, it's taking that idea of like the urban nightmare and saying, well, wait a minute, actually it's just scary at night because things are scary at night. And if you're going to be the kind of person who, who judges other people for where they are and what they have, you're the one who's going to die. You're the one who's, I, I think there's a moral judgment on that character. Hmm. And I think it's set up through that opening shot and through the road rage scene and through Dennis Leary. Now you to get back to this. You talked about him in the bad about his motivation. Like I think it initially starts out with their witnesses. We need to kill him. But I think right. once he gets the wallet, he's the opposite. He's, he's identical to Jeremy Piven. He's judging these people for having for for having yeah. wealth for having money for having that rv and so all his I hate all people his, like you yeah i hate people like you two hundred thousand dollars wasn't enough to not throw him off the top of the building mm-hmm. right his own people are calling him out and he kills his own henchmen because <laughs> he's so road raged about these uppity people coming into his territory that's why he doesn't care about the other yeah. witnesses because they're part of his his area, right? Okay. And so so yeah, these people are yeah, that's that's my take on it. Okay. Well, so I, I, I think you bring up a really interesting point. And and this kind of happens in deliverance too. This this idea of the the barrier, they're building this idea that the barrier between uh civility and uh primal rage is is very thin right yeah these people we're, we're 10 miles from your house these are our neighbors these people are us uh, uh they get into it very easily on the road they they revert to these primal 
a road rage forms um but also as the movie goes on uh the, our protagonists they it, when they when they first get into the bad neighborhood they're looking at like the homeless people and the hobos and stuff and and really kind of like Ugh, yuck you know these almost people. making fun of them yeah but eventually we see them they're kind of turning into these uh street people right they 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 kill someone they they start shooting at the bus because they don't right they're just firing off guns into the night uh, they mm-hmm. they break into the supermarket and they're like, I mean, they're being vandals. They're 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 yeah, they're laughing at the guards. And, yeah, they're making fun of the guards. Yeah, the, the guards Let's, may have helped them if they were like, hey, hey, man, we're really sorry, but but we need your help. We have got into this bad neighborhood, but instead they're like, hey, hey what are you gonna do? Ah! And so the guards yeah. are like, these guys are on PCP. We gotta you gotta call the cops. <laughs> right call the cops that's what we're saying man <laughs> so so they yeah they're 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 turning into uh these other people right uh mm-hmm. the, the into a survival mo- mode in deliverance it was about primal survival and here it's it's kind of the same thing but you're just in the the urban wilderness right mm-hmm. yeah so um are you ready for me to bring up my next point or do you yeah. want to bring one up or okay no, bring it up so, man that was my so this thing. is kind of in the bad but it's also in the in the schlock and just something i want to i want to talk about is um catabasis which is uh the the, the that descent again? catabasis which is a oh. uh, uh, uh <laughs> terminology for the journey into the underworld catabasis i like yeah. that so it, you know, it's it's in a lot of mythology and literature, you know, especially a lot of Greek myths where you go, it's the journey to Hades to get something mm-hmm. or to get out of something. Right. And so this whole idea is a descent into night. It's, it's into the other, it's into hell, whether this really is a hell or not, it's, it's, it's dark and they're alone mm-hmm. and they don't know where they're going and they're being judged. Right. So I think that, that's where you have this idea of this horror movie about descent into the underworld and this is dennis leary's definitely like a king of some sorts in this underworld Mm -hmm. and it's about finding something now a lot of classic mythology you're going to rescue someone or to get some item or something which would have been better if they would have had an item to get or they had and didn't know they had and i think that calling it judgment night and having this clear these people are set up here and it's a journey into hell through this one night i think it's set up in there i don't think i'm reading into it a whole lot maybe a little but i i think it's a missed opportunity because of the character Mm -hmm. motivations are so undeveloped and vague of like there's the there's the you need you need to hang out with other people who are grown up my friends are grown up you know he's a family man now mm-hmm. and his his friends are not his little brother's not but then there's the road rage scene where it's like you're not his father yeah he's right you're not my father yeah that like really doesn't play out right so where's the if you're journeying into the underworld and you're going to be judged and i think jeremy piven's character was judged and that's why he's killed and mm-hmm. i think the other yeah. two characters were judged not as harshly that's why they were both wounded yeah and i think emilio estevez was judged and he came out uh, morally pure on top and so he was able to get out of uh, well, let, this underworld let's think about this for a second so uh jeremy piven Right, as yeah. in Ray, uh, Ray, his his whole deal is is money, right? So he tries to get out of the situation with money, doesn't work. Uh, we get to Cuba Gooding Jr. His whole deal is like he he's ready to rumble, like he's he's ready to fight. He uh, well, I I don't know. He wasn't necessarily ready to fight with the uh, road rage guy because he subdued him. Well, they uh, him uh, and the little like, brother flip flop yeah and, the little and, brother's ready to fight until until it's like you know well you better shut put up and, or shut up and then and he he's like i chickened out i failed and that's that's a bit of a problem i, th- I think maybe if those roles were reversed a little bit um seeing like the person who's ready to fight and they keep that through line and so they stand up and fight 
and that uh, that mm-hmm. it doesn't kill them, but wounds them. And then mm-hmm. we have a person maybe who doesn't want to fight at all. Like they would rather right. die than fight. Like I'm, I'm just thinking of like the, the pacifists, right? Like the right. extreme pacifism to where you're just going, Which, you're just going to roll over and die. And then it almost have, feels like the Emilio Estevez character borderlines on that. Well, but, but he's, he's like the guy that, uh, just wants to be left alone until you push him too far. Like he, or, but he, he has the thing. So, so we, we have a person living for money. We have a person living for the fight. We have a person potentially, I'm, I'm kind of making this up a little bit, but we have a person living for peace, but then we have a person who's living for his family, right? He's living mm-hmm. for others. He's living for his wife and daughter. And mm-hmm. ultimately like, that's the answer. That's, that's the escape that you can right. take to get out of quote unquote hell. Right. Right. He has to get back to his family. And I just wish that would have been explored more because and, it was set up in that initial scene. And they don't show him like, like what a cop out to show his family at the yes, beginning. And that, the, just ending mention. Is, the ending is horrible. Like, oh, and your wife's here. What? No, you, we need a scene where they're yeah. all recovered and they've all learned some lesson based on this night. Yeah. Right. And I think I think where this movie fails to be. I love this movie, but I think it comes up short. And it could have been a huge, huge cult classic if they would have thematically tied in what these people learned about themselves and about being a better human mm-hmm. through this journey into the night it, where they're yeah. being judged. Like it's literally called judgment night. So you need to be judged for something mm-hmm. and found one right. thing are found not. And so you, you come out of it a better person. And I just feel they came out of it alive. I don't feel any of them morally <laughs> changed, right? right? He's like, he's like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna stop going to boxing matches with my friends, which is not the lesson, but there should be some sort of thing that these characters take away. And maybe they yeah. did, but they don't give it to us, the audience. So I'm left wanting. But but oddly enough, they have moments where that could happen. Right. They have they have yes. quiet moments where 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 we can see that character development and they they just maybe don't deliver on it. They, they just don't connect all the dots because, you know, when when Emilio Estevez turns to attack Dennis Leary, it's right after Dennis Leary says he's going to pay a visit to his wife and daughter mm-hmm. and he reads his address. Right. And that's that's the turn. And I'm like, OK, so his family's being threatened. So now he's going to step up. But it's just it's it's interesting that I think you could have taken the relationship with the four main characters and really, really um, explored a couple themes from a lot of different angles. And I think yeah. you had four bad guys and four good guys. So you could have also used um, used the bad guys to be to be foils and mirrors and all sorts mm-hmm. of different things yeah. to, we, we to could, connect to these have characters. Pride, uh, lust greed wrath right we could go down the list right and i'm just saying if you're yeah if you're calling your movie judgment night and it's literally they they take the wrong turn and they go into this dark urban hellscape where there's no one around and it feels otherworldly you're kind of on the nose already so you might as well Mm -hmm. delve into allegory and do it well 